Hi, my name is Jackie Russick, and I'm going to show you today the use of a nasal cannula for oxygen delivery to the patient. This is a nasal cannula, and one of the reasons we use this is that it's simpler for the patient. It's more comfortable than a simple face mask. I'll talk about simple face mask in a little bit. I just wanted to show you the difference. The way we put this on the patient is these two prongs, this is where the oxygen is going to be coming out and going to the patient. These two prongs get placed this direction, not the opposite direction. They're, they're placed where the prongs are arched towards the um, uh, back of the head of the patient. Each one is placed inside one of the nares, and this tubing you can slide this to tighten or loosen this tubing. The tubing is placed. Some, there's different ways you can put this on. I've seen it where it's placed like this and the tubing is put behind the patient's head and it's tightened in a way like this. One of the reasons you might need to do it that way is if there's a lot of a deep pressure also behind the ears of the patient. More common way is if you place these in the nose, give yourself enough room to place this behind the patient's ears. And then you tighten it under the chin. What you want to make sure is that it's not too tight so that you're causing pressure behind the ears. That's one of the things you should check. Uh, daily on your patients. And there are some um, where you can put like, you can either wrap a, a bandage around to have some comfort so that it's not pressing against the ears or, their, or your hospital may have something specifically for that for comfort. So once it's um, on the patient, this end gets attached to the source of oxygen, which will be on the wall. This knob will turn the oxygen on or off. This isn't actually hooked up to the oxygen right now, but if you turn this to the right, there is a black ball in here, and this will rise. If you can see the numbers, it goes from 1 up to 15 on this flow meter. So as you turn this, you can adjust where this ball rises and you need to set this according to the order you have as far as how much oxygen you're going to deliver to the patient. You'll need this wingnut type device. It looks like a, a tree. These are usually already on the flow meter. If not, you'll need to get one. You'll need that because that's how you'll attach the tubing of the oxygen. Make sure that's secure. Your wing nut is tight and adjust the flow meter according to the order of how much oxygen you're going to deliver. Room air is approximately 21% oxygen. For every increment of one on this flow meter, you're adding approximately 3% of oxygen to room air. There is a range for each one, but an approximate is 3%. So, for example, if you have this on one liter per minute, that will correspond to approximately 24 to 28 percent oxygen. That's not necessarily how much oxygen, though, the patient is breathing. That's only one of three components to determine that. The other two are how fast the patient is breathing and how deep the patient is breathing. So the rate of respirations, the depth of respirations, and the amount of oxygen you're delivering to the patient, all three of those are going to determine the range of inspired oxygen that the patient's actually getting. Now I'm going to show you a simple face mask. This is a simple face mask. It fits over the patient's nose and mouth and this strap goes around the head. I'll show you that in a moment. This metal piece is what goes on the bridge of the nose and you can tighten this 
to hold this mask on the patient's face. On the side of this mask are two open holes, and this is for um, air to go out as the patient exhales, and it's also as oxygen is flowing in to help push out air. This tubing is similar to the tubing for the nasal cannula, and it will also get hooked directly to the flow meter. One of the things that you want to check for before you put the oxygen on the patient, even for the nasal cannula, is you want to make sure that when you turn this flow meter on that oxygen is actually being delivered through this flow meter and that something is not wrong with it. If there is something wrong with it, then you may have these on your unit or respiratory therapy may have to come up and put a new one on. So this will get hooked up to your oxygen source the same way. On the bottom of this adapter, make sure it fits good. And again, you'll be turning this black knob to raise this black ball up depending on the order that you have on how much oxygen to deliver. For this type of oxygen delivery device, the simple face mask, this flow meter is going to be set anywhere between 8 and 12 liters per minute. This flow meter ranges where you could set it from 1 liter a minute up to 15 liters a minute. And again, you're going to need to set this between 8 and 12. That's pretty high. The reason that you need a high flow of oxygen through the simple face mask is that as the patient exhales, the exhaled air, uh, part of it is going to be contained and held inside this face mask. Not all of it is going to go out through the ports. And that exhaled air contains a high amount of carbon dioxide. So you need a high flow of oxygen to help push out the carbon dioxide out through these ports so the patient isn't rebreathing carbon dioxide. This face mask can deliver between 35% and 65% oxygen, depending on the setting between 8 and 12 liters per minute. So if you need to advance a patient to this type of oxygen delivery device, some other points to consider when you're putting on this simple face mask is that you can adjust the tightness of the mask by pulling on these straps. Okay. You want to make sure that you have a tight seal around the face so that the oxygen isn't escaping out through the side of this mask. A difference between the oxygen flow with the simple face mask and the nasal cannula is that with the nasal cannula, as a nurse, you will follow the, the order specifically as to the liter flow. The liter flow for nasal cannula will, will, can vary from one liter a minute up to six liters per minute on the flow meter. And you can set the flow meter exactly to what the order is. For the simple face mask, however, the order is in a percent oxygen, not in a specific liter flow. So the way that it works is that the physician or advanced practice nurse will order a certain percent oxygen to be delivered to the patient. And respiratory therapy will measure and adjust the liter flow between 8 and 12 liters per minute to ensure that the amount of oxygen being delivered is what's being ordered. And that concludes my demonstration of simple face masks. Now I'm going to talk to you about an oxygen delivery device that's called a partial rebreathing mask. As you can see, the mask part looks similar. It has a strap that goes around the patient's head, and it has the tubing that will hook up to the oxygen source. A couple of the main differences with this device versus this simple face mask is that there's this reservoir bag. This reservoir bag will, will remain partially inflated with a mixture of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Another difference is that as compared to the simple face mask, the side ports may have on 
these rubber flaps. The purpose for the rubber flaps is that when the patient breathes in, since these rubber flaps are on the outside, as the patient breathes in, the rubber flaps will adhere to the mask and won't allow room air to mix in with the mask. And the same when the patient, when the patient breathes out, because they flap outward, some of the exhaled air, though, will be allowed to escape. So what that may do is, by preventing room air from mixing in, it may ensure a more accurate delivery of the oxygen to the patient. On the inside of the mask, this opening where the oxygen is coming through, I want you to make note that there is no valve here whatsoever <clears throat> for the partial rebreather mask. There is no valve. I'm going to show you another type of oxygen delivery device next where there's a big difference, and one of the big differences is that that device will have a valve here. So the, non, the partial rebreather mask will not have a valve inside here. As far as how much oxygen can be delivered to the patient compared to the simple face mask, when the simple face mask, when the flow meter is set between 8 and 12 liters per minute, that will deliver between 35% and 65% oxygen. On the simple face mask, if you drop that flow liter less than 8 and especially less than 6 liters per minute, there is a very high risk of the patient rebreathing carbon dioxide that was exhaled because there's not enough of a flow of oxygen pushing out the excess carbon dioxide that may accumulate inside this mask. So if need be, the patient could have an order for this type of a mask. So again, it would be placed on in a similar manner over the nose and mouth. The straps go behind the head, making sure they're not twist. You can pull on the sides to tighten. Make sure you have a tight fitting seal around the mask against the skin. You could squeeze this metal bar against the bridge of the nose for added security. And again, as with the other two devices, you're going to want to make sure that when your flow meter is on, that you actually do have oxygen. You can feel a flow of air coming out of here before you attach this to your oxygen source. So you want to make sure that's secure. And again, with this partial rebreathing mask, you're going to want to make sure that the flow meter is going to be set somewhere between 6 and 10. And similar to the simple face mask, respiratory therapy will measure how much oxygen is actually being delivered. And the respiratory therapist then may, may change that flow leader to accommodate to make sure that the proper amount of oxygen that is ordered is actually being delivered. <clears throat>